of Fox Sports. It's time for Dodger Baseball. Live from Dodger Stadium, Prime Ticket presents the Dodgers as they take on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Saturday night to you, wherever you may be. Game three of the four-game series with Pittsburgh. The Pirates have a slight edge. They've won three out of five. The Dodgers will go up against a left-hander tonight, Zach Duke, who beat them opening day back in Pittsburgh. Dodgers have been struggling against left-hand starters. Their record is 2-5. and five. The Dodgers counter with young Carlos Monasterios, a youngster who is 1-0, and oh, picked up a victory in relief in Washington. Tonight will be his first major league start. Then, of course, the wrap-up game tomorrow, and Milwaukee will be here starting Tuesday night. We'll get to the ball game. We'll have it all coming up for you right after this. Here at Dodger Stadium, Pittsburgh Pirates in town. Third game of a four-game set taking on the Dodgers. Let's get to our Lexus pursuing perfection. And for that, we're going to go back to last night. Andre Ethier, his sixth jack of the year. He's got 19 RBI. Nice catch out there in the outfield. But James Loney also crushing one. Went down, barely got that one out. His first home run of the year. Alexis pursuing perfection moment with Steve Lyons and Steve considering Monasterios making his first ever start in the bigs some offense early would help him out Yeah, it's nice to see the offense maybe starting to turn around a little bit the two home runs one of those aided by a couple bad defensive plays By the Pittsburgh Pirates, but we'll take it yeah. the Dodgers haven't played good defense all year and everyone else has taken it You know my guy today. I think is gonna be Matt Kemp He's been stuck on 20 RBIs and 20 runs for eight games now that was leading the league for a long time
time. Uh, I think he gets two of each tonight. I think right in the middle of that order, he's going to be doing some damage. And as far as defense, uh, Dodgers have gone three straight games without committing an error. Good so now we've completely jinxed, jinxed them. That. Uh, hopefully it'll be a big win for the Dodgers and for Carlos Monasterios as he uh, takes the hill, the native from Venezuela. It's going to be exciting. When we come back, first pitch, Ben Scully has the call. Ball on Prime Ticket is brought to you by your Southern California Hyundai dealers. Want more MPG? Hyundai has it with seven models that get 30 miles per gallon or more. By Shakey. What was the first band to play at a Shakey's? Go to Shakey's.com slash trivia. By AT&T TV. High speed internet, home phone, and wireless. Visit att.com or call 1-800-PICK-ATT for details. By Southwest Airlines, go to southwest.com. Grab your bag, it's on. And by Wells Fargo, together we'll go far. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Saturday night to you, wherever you may be. A momentous night for a youngster by the name of Carlos Monasterios, who is about ready to make his debut as a major league starting pitcher. One other thing, as you come to Dodger Stadium tonight, you look at the flags in center field, and they are hanging limply down the poles. No longer do we have that strong, bitter wind blowing from left to right. So the prospects of a very good game without any weather interfering. Game three of the four game series and the penultimate game in the series between the Dodgers and the Pirates. Tomorrow we'll say goodbye to the Bucks for the year. Here's the Pirates starting lineup. Aki Iwamura will lead off at second base. Andy LaRoche, an ex-Dodger, is at third. Andrew McCutcheon, a star about to burst on the scene, is in center. Ryan Church, who wears out the Dodgers at Dodger Stadium, in right field. Then you have Ryan Domit, who has hit safely in 10 straight, a switch hitting catcher, followed by the USC pride, Jeff Clement, at first base. Lasting's Millage is in left field. Probably their best pitcher, left-hander Zach Duke, and not a bad hitter, batting eight. And the shortstop, Ronnie Cedeno, hitting ninth, which is what John Russell does just about every game. Carlos Monasterios, kind of a baby face kid. He is 6'2", 175 to 180, and he is 24 years old. He was originally signed by the Yankees back in 2004. 
Then he moved from the Yankees to the Phillies organization in a deal that involved, among others, Bobby Abreu and Corey Lytle. And then the Mets chose Monasterios out of the Phillies system. And then the Dodgers picked him up on the Rule 5 draft from the Phillies. So with all of that in the background, here he goes. Monasterios is from Venezuela. Basically a sinking fastball, curveball, slider, and a changeup. Joe Torre said to him, go out and have fun. Throw the way you like to throw, nice and easy. If you get in trouble, we'll come and get you, and we'll watch your pitch count. And if he does not get deep into a lot of counts early in the game, he told Carlos he's going to be around a while, maybe for the decision. The first pitch to Iwamura is low and away as Aki runs up as if to bomb. Akinori Iwamura from Ahime, which is a small town in Japan. He takes off the play ball two, two and zero. Oh. Iwamura well put together, 5'9", and about close to 180 pounds. Left-hand hitter, and back comes Monasterios, letter high fastball, first strike, and the count 2-1. and one. Well, after the last two nights, it feels almost tropical without the wind. It's 67 degrees, a beautiful May 1st. And the 2-1 pitch, Iwamura takes very high. That brought Martin out of the count. And the count three and one. The so Carlos Monasterios making what he hopes is just one of many major league starts. And his three one pitch. The right hander delivers very high ball four. So not a good way to start. But he wouldn't be human if he wasn't out there battling some butterflies. We'll take a look at the Dodgers who will try to help him out. The outfield would have Reed Johnson, Matt Kemp, and Andre Ethier with Blake Carroll, DeWitt, and Loney on the infield and Martin handling on his area. So the runner at first, nobody out. He'll get a good challenge now from Andy LaRoche hitting 333, two home runs, five runs batted in. Out of his stretch comes Monasterios and he misses inside. And now Martin going out to talk to him. Andy LaRoche a very consistent ball player and for the last week he's been hitting over 430 on the road in 12 games he's hitting 375 and so valuable to the ball club with runners in scoring position admittedly it's very early but even so and he's been hitting 400 so he has come of age with that bat Andy LaRoche his dad of course pitched in the big leagues and he has a brother, Adam, very active in the National League. And the pitch to Andy is high. 2-0 and oh the count. So it's the old story. Get that ball over with something on it. And right now he's struggling after walking Akinora. He is 2-0 and oh to LaRoche. The right-hander set at the belt. There goes Aki. The pitch is outside. The throw on a pop is in time to get him. So Iwanura is nailed. He was two for two in stolen bases. Martin got it down there in a hurry. It was short hop and the tag applied by Blake DeWitt. So that helps a little bit as far as Monasterios is concerned. A walk, but now he gets the man. Meanwhile, a 3-0 and count is now 3-1 and one as he finds the strike zone. So he went three and one to Iwamura and walked him. Comes right back three and one to Andy LaRoche. The three one pitch breaking ball in there. And he's gone towards first base, gets the news, and has to go and pick up his bat. Doug Eddings is the plate umpire. Dana Demuth, Kerwin Danley, and C.B. Buckner. And of course, that will not endear LaRoche to Doug Eddings, throwing the bat away and acting for his own umpire. All right, three and two the count. Carlos ready over the top, and it is swung on, pop in the air, foul. Loney comes over to the pirate dugout at the railing, leans in and backhands it for the out. So a wobbly start, and he's getting away with it. He went three and one to Iwamura and walked him, got him on an attempted stolen base. Goes three and one to LaRoche, then three and two, and gets him to foul out. And now here is young Andrew McCutcheon. And McCutcheon, 
among other things in the first inning in this early year has a double and a home run so he's tough especially first time up and he takes low and inside ball one one and oh McCutcheon for the last week hitting in the three eighties right hand hitter splendid center fielder takes low again so Monasterius behind each of the first three hitters but he is two out and the base is empty. Carlos nods yes now turns and the 2 0 pitch on the way is swung on high fly ball to left field Johnson to the track at the wall it's gone Andrew McCutcheon has done it again in the first inning. He has two home runs and a double in his first at bat as he jogs around to put the bucks on the board one to nothing for McCutcheon his fourth home run his eighth run batted in and we were quoting Jim Tracy the other night in talking about McCutcheon and Jim was saying for a kid of his age he is off the charts he's going to be a good major league player someday a really good major league player well he is just about there right now remember that name Andrew McCutcheon an off speed pitch is up to Ryan Church one ball and no strikes. Ryan Church is playing right field tonight in the absence of Garrett Jones. The 1 0 pitch on the way is swung on, and that's whacked to right center. Matt Kemp on the dead run is going to have to watch it bounce against the wall, and into second base goes Church. So apparently, after falling behind to the first two hitters, Monasterius tries to get an early strike and gives up a home run and a double. The so Ryan Church at second and Ryan Domit coming up. The reason that Ryan Church is playing right field and there'd be a brief meeting at the mound with Rick Honeycutt is the fact that Garrett Jones, a fine right fielder, left hand hitter, and Garrett last night apparently had something to eat after the game and it stuck in his throat. Not enough for him perhaps to holler for help, but it was very uncomfortable and apparently he went through the night with the food whatever it was in his throat so early this morning he went to the hospital interestingly enough the doctor who attended him at one time worked for the pirates and Garrett was released he's okay and for those of you watching on television you just saw a glimpse of him in street clothing probably going back to put on his uniform probably just arrived so we're happy that he's okay and here's Ryan Domit, switch hitting catcher, red hot, takes ball one. Domit with a 10 game hitting streak, and during that streak, blazing hot, hitting 471. That has his average to 324. Three home runs, 12 runs batted in, a natural right handed hitter, but his dad made him switch, and it's worked out for him. He takes a breaking ball for a strike. And a one ball one strike count. During that streak he's had at least one extra base hit in his last four games. He's also knocked in eight runs in his last four. So he's trying to pick up Ryan Church at second base. The one one pitch to Ryan Domit over the top curve ball is hit to the right side up with it there's the whip to get him and that's the inning. One run, two hits. Andrew McCutcheon. He is a first inning warrior, and he hits a home run again tonight. And at the end of half an inning, one nothing Pittsburgh.
19 pitches. More importantly, he fell behind one ball and no strikes to all five hitters. Here's the Dodger lineup. Reed Johnson leads off in left field against a left hander. Then it's Russell Martin, Andre Ethier, and Matt Kemp, followed by James Loney, Casey Blake, Blake DeWitt, Jamie Carroll, and Carlos Monasterios. On the mound is Zach Duke out of Waco, Texas. Zach, 6'2", 220. He is 27 years old on the 19th of April, so he just celebrated that birthday. He was a 20th round pick by the Pirates, but he is, without a doubt, their best pitcher. Interestingly enough, however, he had a terrible year last year. He did beat the Dodgers opening day, going the minimum five innings. Reed Johnson takes a strike, and they count 0 and 1. The so Reed, in that leadoff role, trying to get the Dodgers started. Xavier Paul did a good job of doing that last night. Johnson, right hand hitter, it's a slow ground ball to Andy LaRoche, and he flips it over to first in time for the out. So one up and one away, which gives us a chance to set the Pirates. Millage, McCutcheon, and Church in the outfield. LaRoche, Sedeno, Iwamura, and Clement on the infield. And Ryan Domit handling Zach Duke. Russell Martin coming up with one away, first inning, and the Pirates leading one to nothing. We were talking about uh, Zach Duke and the fact that he had an awful year last year. Zach Duke led the National League with 16 losses last year, but there's more to it than that. Martin hitting 268. Zach ready now to make his first pitch, and Russell looks at a strike. 0 and 1. Zach Duke also had five no decisions, but the Pirates lost all five of those no decisions as well. Here's the strike one pitch on the way, fouled off, and the count 0 2. Sus, the Pirates' record with their best pitcher on the mound last year was 11 and 21. That would be the largest number of losses behind any one pitcher in the major leagues. Zach looks down the barrel to get a sign, both feet on the rubber. Now the left hand already and comes back 0 2, and Martin takes a fastball very high, ball one. One and two. Dodgers have struggled a bit in the early going against left hand starters. They are two and five. They have certainly not struggled against the Pirates here at Dodger Stadium for the last 10 years. Here's the one two pitch on the way. Martin fouls it back. The Dodgers. Going back to 2003, have won 20 of 26. Going all the way back to 2000, their percentage is 671. So they have dominated the Pirates over the last 10 years here. One and two, the count to Martin. Curve ball misses down and in in the dirt. Two balls and two strikes. Another thing about Zach Duke last year, he started 218 innings. And in 29 of those innings, he used 20 pitches or more. That's not much. The fastball up and in, three and two. In fact, that ratio is 13%. That's the lowest rate of any pitcher in the major leagues. Threw a lot of strikes. Right up there with him, Roy Halliday. 3 2 pitch on the way is a fastball fouled away, and Martin is still there. In looking at his work, Zach Duke, four years ago, was in 215 innings, and then last year, 213, so he certainly can be a workhorse. Martin waiting. Here's the 3 2 pitch on the way, and Russell takes strike three call, and he was on his way to first base. Shades of Andy LaRoche. LaRoche started to first, had to call back and fouled out. Martin goes to first on a pitch he thought was inside, but certainly the tape looked like a strike, and down he goes. So two down in the first inning, one to nothing Pittsburgh. And Zach Duke now working on Andre Ethier. Duke struggling a little bit, came into the game with more walks than strikeouts. That's always a bad sign. 
One reason I guess he's two and two. Ethian meanwhile hits a fly ball just foul down the left field line and a scramble in the seats. So Andre will come back 0 and 1. Ethier last night had a two run home run in the first inning and then made an incredible diving catch on a ball hit by McCutcheon in the right field corner in the eighth inning. McCutcheon also made a great catch on a ball hit by Xavier Paul. There were two highlight film catches in last night's game. Andrew burned his left elbow. Ethier was covered with mud. Ethia drills one inside first and down the line. That'll be good for extra bases. Ryan Church playing the carom. Ethia into second base gingerly. I think he still feels that left elbow. Uh, excuse me, left ankle. But he's okay. So a two out double by Andre Ethia. And that'll bring up Matt Kemp. So the Dodgers with the tying run at second base. Thanks to Andre Ethier's double and Matt Kemp trying to pick him up. For Andre, that would be his third double. He has a half a dozen home runs. So as Ethier backs away from second base, Matt Kemp hitting 278. Matt has struck out three to one strikeouts to walks, but of course that's the bill all power hitters pay. Big swing and a miss, and the count 0 and 1. Kemp last night came up empty. He had a tough night striking out his first three times and then grounded out to go 0 for 4. Pirates got to run the home run by McCutcheon. He has burned them in the first inning in two of the three games. Kemp takes low one ball and one strike. So the Bucks lead one nothing but now with two out Andre Ethier doubles into the right field corner. Concluding game of the series and the last game of the year between the Dodgers and Pirates tomorrow, and that'll be Karsten and Corota. Duke set at the belt, looks back at Ethier, double checks. Now the pitch to Kemp, and that's a bit high and inside. Ball two, two and one, the count. Zach Duke, when he started his big league career in 2005, after his first six starts that year, his earned run average was 0.9. I mean, what an incredible way to start your career. Here's the 2 1 pitch on the way to Matt Kemp, and that's down and away. You have the left hand to James Loney on deck, so he might very well be trying to pitch around Matt Kemp. Three and one the count. Matt back up and waiting. Ethier away from second base with two out. Now Duke set at the belt. Zach ready in the 3 1 pitch way outside. Ball four. So he really didn't want any part of Matt Kemp. And with runners at first and second and two down, he'll take his chances against James Loney. So Ethier has the double, was hitting 333 against left hand pitching anyway. Now Loney is hitting 250, and Matt Kemp was hitting only 222 against left handers. So Loney checking in, had that big home run last night. Interesting, last year it took him 76 games before he hit a home run at Dodger Stadium. 76 of the 81. Then he homers last night. Remember, 12 of his 13 last year on the road. Loney looks at a hook. It's in for a strike. And the count 0 and 1. James batting 309 with the home run and 10 runs batted in. Duke left foot on the rubber looks down the barrel to dome it to get a sign. Ethier at second, Kemp at first with two out. Back comes Duke and tries to hit the outside corner and misses. And we have a one ball, one strike count. We told you he broke in with a 0 0.9 ERA in his first six starts. They got his name along with Boo Ferris, Steve Rogers, and Fernando Valenzuela breaking in with a bang after his first six. 1-1 one, one pitch is a fastball at the knees for a strike. In fact, 
the board says change and from up here maybe so a great motion and then he took a lot off it and the count is one and two. Duke zeroing in on Ryan Domit wigwagging a few signs behind the plate. Now the one two pitch on the way. Duke ready and deals and it swung on and fouled away off to the left. If you're watching on television you might have noticed that shot we took at home plate. We didn't see Ryan Domit so much put any fingers down. He touched various parts of his body. His arm his shoulder. So we'll keep an eye and just see if that's how Ryan's calling pitches. Duke waiting for his catcher to settle. He was all over the place on the previous pitch. Here's the one two pitch coming up to James Loney. Duke ready over the top swung on and foul back. One nothing Pittsburgh Andrew McCutcheon a first inning home run. He's done that to the Dodgers. He had a first inning double last night and the other night before the Dodgers series he hit a home run in the first inning. One and two the count to Loney. Two on two out. Heath here in Kemp. And Duke pitching very carefully. Casey Blake on deck. In fact, Loney tired of waiting and backs out for the moment. Ryan Domit settles behind the plate. Zach Duke gives it a long look. And wait a minute. Domit said, I've gone through all my signs, and Duke hasn't said yes. So now, because of television, all the players have learned use the glove, no lip reading, just in case somebody in the opposition. Is watching. One ball and two. Let's take a shot now of Ryan Doman again, just to see what he does. All right, into the crouch he goes. Let me see fingers. No fingers. And the pitch is swung on and fouled away. So that time, I guess he felt there was no reason to give a sign. He had just left the mound. Well, we better watch him again. I remember years ago the Dodgers had a pitcher. I'm not going to mention his name who never could remember the sign for a fastball on the curve. You can just imagine what that did to the catcher. So what they did if the catcher's feet were together it was a fastball and if his feet were spread it was a curve. So with Ryan no fingers he's touching parts of his body and the one two fastball is low ball two two and two. Well John Russell who is the skipper of the Pirates was a catcher in his playing days. In fact he caught no hitter number six from Nolan Ryan. So he has Domit not using signs as far as fingers. Here's the two two pitch on the way and it's off the plate in the dirt ball three three and two. Well Casey Blake waiting as the battery. Of Zach Duke and Ryan Domit have gone all the way with all the wigwagging, all the different signs. Meanwhile, Andre Ethier at second, Matt Kemp at first, two out, one nothing Pittsburgh, first inning. Domit again in his crouch. Can't remember the last time I saw a catcher who did not use his fingers to give signs. Three and two, the runners will be going. That'll certainly favor Ethier. Duke ready and Zach gets off the rubber instead. One run, two hits for the Bucks. They had a home run by McCutcheon, and that was followed by a double by Ryan Church, but Ryan Domet grounded out. All right, Loney back up and waiting. Three and two to count. Duke set at the belt, looks at the runners. They're ready to go. There they go. And the pitch is swung on, lifted to left field. Over there is Lasting's Millage to make the catch for the out. So he got a bit of an education watching a catcher touch parts of his body without ever using his fingers. And at the end of an inning, it's one nothing Pirates.
Ryan Domit, Zach Duke, the pitching coach Joe Kerrigan, and they're still talking over that first inning because, among other things, Zach Duke made 26 pitches. Now, in his starts this year, he has not had a 100 pitch game yet. Meanwhile, first baseman Jeff Clement at the plate, and he takes off the plate for ball one. Clement, a boy from Iowa, but he went to school here at USC. Three home runs, five runs batted in. The 1 0 pitch in for a strike. The 1 and 1 that counted, Jeff, from Marshalltown, Iowa. The 1 1 pitch on the way, off speed and away, ball two. Jeff was originally a first round pick by the Seattle Mariners out of SC. Now the 2 1 pitch on the way is fouled back to the screen. Jeff, as a kid, played in the Little League World Series, and his team was managed by his dad. They won the United States Central Region title in 1996. Here's the 2 2 pitch on the way, swung on and fouled off. It was a curveball, and it looked like Clement was having a lot of trouble with curveballs last night. He went 0 for 2, striking out once with a couple of men on base on curveballs. Two and two to count to the left hand hitter. 6 1, 2 10, 27 years old. Come August, slow breaking ball drops in for strike three. That was quite a pitch from Monasterios. That's really got to give him a little confidence. Big slow rainbow curveball. And he has one out with his first strikeout. And the batter now will be Lasting Millard, who is struggling. Millage three hits in his last 22 at bats, so his average taking a beating. He's hitting just 229. And the first pitch misses ball one. So there is one consistency to Monasterios. He's pitching behind to just about every hitter. One ball and no strikes to Millage, one nothing Pittsburgh, second inning. The next pitch is punch foul outside of first and down the line. And the count one ball and one strike. Carlos Monasterios made 19 pitches in the first inning, and he has one out here in the second. He's given up a home run, a double, a walk, and he also has a strikeout. The 1-1 one -one pitch, Millage swings, doesn't get it. Good off-speed pitch. He was way out in front of it. And the count, one and two. He is the youngest of three boys, and he has that first name lastings indicating he's the last child and right now he is hit by the pitch so millage nailed by the pitch and that will bring up Zach Duke the pitcher How about him? Pitcher, number 57, Zach Duke. fastball that got millage just underneath the arm right about at the rib cage he just tried to get away turning inwardly and took it instead I think on the arm so Millage at first, and Zach Duke, who is not a bad hitter, and hitting eighth. Left-hand batter, throw to first, Millage running back to the bag. Millage, one for two in stolen bases. McCutcheon, who's going to do everything for the Pirates. McCutcheon leads, he has stolen ten. So Millage off the bag with one out. The pitcher batting eighth in the lineup every game the Dodgers have played. The bunt is down. Good bunt. Martin picks it up, throws to first. Millage rounding second and then gets back to the bag as Jamie Carroll broke to cover third. So Duke does his job, gets the bunt down, advances his man, which is the reason, I guess, why John Russell likes his pitcher hitting eighth. They hit eighth against the Dodgers in the three games in Pittsburgh and all three here. So Duke gets his fifth sacrifice. And now the number nine man, Ronnie Cedeno, who's really struggling with the bat. Cedeno hitting only 208. And the first pitch, a breaking ball down and away, ball one. So a couple of fellas out of Venezuela battling things out in the second inning here in Los Angeles. Ronnie Cedeno at the plate. Carlos Monasterios on the mound. 
Sedeno waiting and the 1 0 pitch on the way. Monasterios delivers and that's fouled away. And the count 1 and 1. Sedeno appeared as a pinch hitter last night against Jonathan Broxton. And Broxton just blew him away. Of course, here was Jonathan Broxton last night on a bitter cold night. Came in from the bullpen and his first pitch was a 97 mile an hour fastball. Sedeno pokes one foul off first out of play. That first pitch was to Lastings Millage last night. He struck him out. If you were watching last night, we pointed out the fact that Sedeno was not anywhere close to the on deck circle. He was almost behind home plate waiting to take his turn at bat against Broxton. Here's the one two pitch to Ronnie. Carlos ready over the top high and inside almost got him. Big curve ball with no break to it. And we're watching Sedeno go around to the left hand hit his box for the moment. And let's see maybe it grazed him. He hasn't made a move to first but at the same time I think he might very well be given first. Pick. There he goes. So you've had two hit batters here, Millage, and now with two out, Sedeno. And that'll bring up Iwamura. Second baseman. <laughs> so Sedeno at first, Millage at second, two out, one nothing Pittsburgh, second inning. And the left hand hitting Iwamura checking in. From Ahime in Japan. And he takes in the dirt, smothered by Martin. One ball and no strikes. Iwamura is a native of Uwajima, a small coastal town on the western shore of the smallest of Japan's four big islands, Shikoku. I remember thinking, well, it was a long time ago when we were there with the Dodgers, about if you take the four Japanese islands and fit them inside the state of California. The 1 0 pitch is swung on and missed. In those days, to give you an idea of how crowded it is over there, you could take the four islands, put them inside the state of California, and the population, and I'm talking 50 years ago, was over 100 million. How would you like 100 million in California? Seems that way at 5 o'clock, doesn't it? 1 and 1 the count to Iwamura. Monasterios delivers and it's lined to left field coming up to trap the ball is Johnson coming to the plate thinking I guess the ball was caught is Millage and he goes back to third. Lasting Millage was confused. The ball was trapped by Reed Johnson. You could see it up here but probably not down on the field. So there's a base hit by Iwamura with two out and runners at first and second. And he winds up without a run batted in. Good play by Reed Johnson. And that'll bring up Andy LaRoche. And Rick Honeycutt is going out to the mound yet again. So the base is loaded. Honeycutt, along with Russell Martin, but Honeycutt's doing the talking. Monasterios is doing the listening. Andy LaRoche. Fouled out in the first inning after thinking that he had a walk, remember? And for LaRoche, he has been dynamite with runners in scoring position. He's hitting 400, and he's coming up now with the bases loaded. For the year, Andy is batting 328, two home runs, five runs batted in. In his career, he has not done well at all in bases loaded situations. Hitting less than a buck. Monasterios out of a stretch. Ready now. LaRoche waits and Andy takes one under the elbows inside. Fastball for ball one. One and oh. Monasterios has faced 11 batters and he's gotten a first pitch strike to only one. One of 11. Now the 1 0 pitch on the way. Monasterius delivers ground ball to third. Blake takes it to the bag, and the kid has survived the inning. No runs, one hit, two hit batters, three left because of the confused Lastings Millage, one nothing Pittsburgh.
The Dodgers dodge a bullet. So does Monasterios. The Pirates lead 1-0. And Casey Blake leads off and takes a strike. Then it'll be Blake DeWitt and Jamie Carroll. One run, three hits for the Pirates. No runs, one hit for the Dodgers. The pitch in for a strike, and they count 0-2. The question, of course, is why would Lasting's Millage be confused with two out? Here's the strike two pitch on the way, hit foul outside of third. I mean, with two out on a line drive to left field, you have nothing better to do than take off and should have scored easily. Instead, somewhere he got around third and must have thought that there were less than two outs and the ball was caught and he wanted to get back to third. That's the best guess we have as to what was going on inside his mind. But anyway, his poor base running took the Pirates out of the inning. Though it's still just one to nothing Pittsburgh. Now the strike two pitch on the way is fouled off. The Pirates basically are a station to station team. For instance, they've studied them, and for John Russell, he is 15th in the National League, 15 out of 16, in the sense with a runner on first and a base hit, the runner does not get to third. He only goes to second. Here's the strike two pitch on the way, and Blake takes a little high. Ball one, one and two. They're 14th in the National League when they have a runner at second base and a base hit, and the runner scores rarely. The one two pitch fouled away. So in this day and age they watch your every move and they can certainly point out the glaring weakness and how it affects the game and the ultimate outcome for the team. One two pitch to Casey Blake a line drive backhanded by Iwamura. So Blake drills one and Aki makes the catch. Be sure to join the Dodgers Friday May 7th for 60s night. And the first 20,000 fans in attendance will take home a Dodger coach's poster reminiscent of the days of the Rat Pack. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com or call 866-DODGERS today. One away, and the batter now Blake DeWitt, who looks at a strike and the count 0-1. One nothing Pittsburgh, a first inning home run by Andrew McCutcheon. DeWitt takes another pitch for a strike and they count 0-2. Blake hitting 263 with five runs batted in. On deck batting eighth in the lineup, Jamie Carroll. Now the strike two pitch on the way, breaking ball in the dirt gets away from Ryan Domit. One and two the count. Boy, when you think about Domit going through what he does behind the plate, it would appear to be a lot tougher trying to figure out the pitch. Now he's gone back to the fingers. One and two, and DeWitt hits a slow roll at Akamura, who feels it and makes the play. So two down, and Jamie Carroll coming up. Betting man, shortstop, number 14, Jamie Carroll. And remember the old days, one for a fastball, two for the curve, three for whatever else you had. And then we were watching Ryan go through all of that in the first inning. Jamie Carroll hitting 229. Watching Jamie at shortstop reminds us to remind you the chances would appear to be pretty good that Rafael Furcal will play during the Milwaukee series. And then in looking at the dates, Raphael could be in the lineup and then by the weekend when Colorado is here it could be that Manny would be ready. Breaking ball is low one ball and one strike. So of course the Dodgers with Ramirez and for call put up some big numbers until both men went down. One ball and one strike. Duke back with a fastball grounded back a third backhanded by Andy LaRoche. The throw has to be a tag at the other end by Clement. And that'll do it for Carroll and the Dodgers. And at the end of two, it's one to nothing in favor of the Pirates.
third inning with the Pirates leading the Dodgers one to nothing on a home run by Andrew McCutcheon and McCutcheon will lead it off here in the third inning. Carlos Monasterio struggling especially with his first pitch in direct contrast to the left hander Zach Duke where Monasterio I know at one time had one first pitch strike to the first 11 batters he faced. Zach Duke has had a first pitch strike to all eight batters that he's faced. So here is Andrew McCutcheon. McCutcheon a first round pick back in 2005 takes off the plate ball one. He arrived on June the 4th in his fifth career game. He had two triples. Then he showed off his power with three home runs. He fouls off the bunt. He had three home runs against the Washington Nationals on the 1st of August that year. Then he showed a strong arm and exceptional range. So he's also had a great chance to get to the big leagues early because the Pirates have lost more than 90 games five straight years. And they had their worst season last year since 2001. So it actually helped McCutcheon. No pressure. Just go out and play. The 1-1 one, one pitch and Andrew rolls one foul outside of third and the count one and two. Garrett Jones was the only player for the Pirates to hit more than 12 home runs last year. Garrett had 21 and it's nice to see him now back in uniform after going through that awful night with food lodged somewhere near his esophagus. The one two pitch is sliced foul down the right field line. Still one and two. How fast is Andrew McCutcheon? Well, they have studied him, they have watched him, and they say maybe Carl Crawford over in the American League is probably faster, but that's it. And he has 10 stolen bases already this year. He takes low, two and two the count. Last year, Andrew. Stole 22 out of 27, but they want him to run a lot more this year. 2 2 pitch to McCutcheon is swung on, hit to center. Kemp starts back, then comes up a step and makes the catch. So McCutcheon, a fly ball to center, one away, and the batter now will be Ryan Church. Church in his young career has put up big numbers against the Dodgers, especially here in Dodger Stadium. So it was no surprise that Ryan came up and doubled in his first at bat. He has a career batting average of better than 380 here. And Ryan takes high ball one, one and zero. Oh. Ryan has hit safely now in each of his last six starts. The 1-0 pitch on the way, and he has a look, and that's low. Ryan playing right field tonight, played left field the other night. Two balls and no strikes the count. Monasterios ready, and the young right-handed deals, and it is off speed, and Church way out in front of a great changeup. Two and one the count. Boy, if he can throw that thing for strikes, he will develop in a hurry. Two and one account to Ryan Church. Now the two one pitch, and that's taken low and inside. Ball three, three and one. I was reading about a recent game pitched by Tim Lincecum, and Lincecum, I believe, threw three consecutive changeups to a hitter. And that really got the attention of the scouts. 3-1 pitch on the way is foul back. 3 and 2 the count to Ryan Church. Ryan the left-hand hitter trying to get something started with one out. Ryan's from Santa Barbara. Lives in Florida and was originally drafted by the Indians out of the University of Nevada. He grew up in Lompoc. His favorite player was Chipper Jones. Now the 3 2 pitch, and Ryan looks, and it's strike three called. So Monasterios picks up his second strikeout. Remember, he made 39 pitches in the first two innings, and Joe was saying he'd probably let him go if he can, go about 75, 
and he got church at the knees. Of course, you kneel in church, so that figures. Two down, and here's Ryan Domit. It's a little ground ball, a lot of English on it. Picked up by Carroll to get him. And a very nice one, two, three inning for Carlos Monasterios. And he has to be at top of the world right now, but it's still one to nothing Pirates. Bottom of the third inning, one to nothing in favor of the Pirates on the first inning home run by Andrew McCutcheon. Now in the bottom of the third, Carlos Monasterios, then Reed Johnson and Russell Martin. Zach Duke about ready to go to work. One run, three hits for the Pirates. No runs, one hit for the Dodgers, a double by Andre Ethier. And Zach Duke deals, gets it in for a strike, and the count all in one. So the left-hander came in with a record of two and two, beat the Dodgers opening day. His fastball misses in a one-ball, one-strike count. Zach is three and three in his career against the Dodgers. One-one pitch on the way is swung on, hit shallow right field. It's going to drop for a base hit. Carlos Monasterios, a little fly ball single for his first major league hit. They'll get the ball and toss it over to the Dodger dugout. Larry Boa has it, rubs it clean, and that'll go into the trophy case. So quite a night as Monasterios gets his first hit, a modest thing in Dynome. He went down to hit a breaking ball and a little fly ball single. So with Monasterios at first, nobody out. You have Johnson, Martin, and Ethier trying to move him around. Zach Duke's off speed pitch dips in for a strike. Curveball, not much of a break to it. 0 and 1 the count. Reed looking down to Boa to see if there's a play in the works. It's always tough to put a play on with a pitcher running. Monasterios, short lead at first, held on by Clement. Duke looks over there, now comes back to Johnson, and it's pulled foul outside of third. 0 and 2 the count to Reed. There was a lot of talk about Joe Torrey and his horse. Homeboy Chris. There were, I believe, 20 horses in the race. And Joe's horse finished 16th. But it finished. It went all the way around like all the other big kids on the block. 0-2 oh, the count. The strike two pitch on the way, a check swing, a look, swing is called, and down goes Johnson. Trying to hold up on a breaking ball, a slow off-speed pitch, and he couldn't do it. So for Zach Duke, he picks up his second strikeout, and the battle will...
But how in the world the men who call the races can remember the colors and the numbers of 20 horses? I remember a long time ago going to a track in Florida and sitting in the booth with Freddie Capicella, who was a great uh, horse race caller, and watching him not only memorize the colors and the numbers for race number one, then erase all of that from his mind and do it over again for race number two and do that for a career? Unbelievable. Ephia takes a slow curveball for a strike in the count on one. I might be able to do a two horse race if one was black and one was white, maybe. Oh, and one the count. Ethier doubled a right in the first inning. Well, with a runner at second base now, it's a curveball for a strike. Well, check Ryan Doman. Remember in the first inning with two out, Ethier was at second, and Domit was not using his fingers. He was touching his shoulder, his helmet. His head now there he goes to it now. I don't know if uh, John Russell thinks that the Dodgers are smart enough to steal signs He's here a drive into right center going back on the ball Three run home run for Andre Ethier and the Dodgers lead three to one Andre's seventh home run of the year and for Zach Duke that would be the fifth home run that he has allowed. So for John Russell, who has his pitcher batting eight, who has his catcher doing all kinds of different things behind the plate, the payoff is the hitter, and Ethier drives it out. And just to complete the thought prior to the home run, when Ethier was at second base, we had the thought after the fact that maybe Domit was doing that, thinking Andre might be stealing signs. I would have bet against it. Now he did it again with Monasterios at second base. I know they're not thinking Monasterios was stealing the sign. You'll have to ask John Russell. Meanwhile, 0 and 2 the count to Matt Kemp. Dodgers three, Pirates one. Andre putting on a show. 31 home runs last year, and he has seven right now and gets a pat from Monasterios. Strike two pitch on the way. Matt takes very high. Ball one. One and two. In looking at Zach Duke and his work against the Dodgers, he had allowed only one home run in his career, and that was Martin. Pitch fouled away. Ethier, however, was hitting 316 against them going in. And Andre now has a double and the three run home run. Oethia gets the Dodgers out in front. One ball and two strikes. The count. Martin probably hits one into right center for a base hit. Up with it is Ryan Church. So for Duke, first of all, he gave up a flare single to the Dodger pitcher, Carlos Monasterio. The then he gave up that little dribbler by Russell Martin for a base hit. Then he gets hammered by Andre Ethier, and now Kemp arches one into right center for a base hit. So the batter will be James Loney, who flied to left with two on in the first inning. So Andre Ethier. Doing very, very well, thank you, and especially against a left hand pitcher. Meanwhile, Loney takes a strike. Coming into the game, Ethier was hitting 333 against left hand pitching, which would be a marked improvement over the battles he had against left handers last year. The more he plays, the better he gets. 0 and 1 the count. Duke at the belt. Zach's fastball in for a strike. And the count 0-2. Pirates had a home run in the first inning by McCutcheon. Dodgers get a three-run home run by Andre Ethier and lead 3-1. Duke hands it his sides. Matt Kemp always a threat to run over there at first. Duke knows that and bluffs a throw as he straddles the rubber. 
Matt Kemp in the early going has stolen three but has been caught five times. Now Duke is ready another look at Matt. Now Duke to the plate breaking ball off speed slow breaking ball one and two the count. Pirates on a couple of hit batters in a base hit a base running blunder confusion and then LaRoche hit into a force play so they blew their opportunity. The one two pitch coming up and Loney swings fouls it away. Pirates came in here tonight 10 wins 13 losses fourth place five games back of the Cardinals. The Dodgers started the night nine and 14 six games back of San Diego. The Padres right now are losing two to one in Milwaukee in the seventh inning. One ball and two strikes they count to James Loney. Duke ready. There goes Kemp. The fastball lifted the left field. Going back is Millage and makes the catch for the out. And Kemp gets back to first. And the batter now will be Casey Blake with two outs. You know, this Mother's Day, give the gift of Dodger baseball with a ticket to my town. Fans receive a free Dodger Town Mother's t shirt, all inclusive food options, and $2 from each ticket will be donated to Think Cure. For tickets, visit dodgers.com slash my town or call 866 Dodgers. Casey Blake hit one right on the button first time up, lined out to Iwamura, and takes a strike. All in one. 15 of 15 first pitches for strikes. That's the way Zach Duke is working in direct contrast to Monasterios. How'd he come out? Well, he's losing three to one. Throw to first. Kemp, who was going, could be an even bigger threat now with two out. Oh, and one to Casey Blake. Casey hitting 273, three home runs, 15 RBIs. Clement holding a corner on Kemp. Duke hands it his sides, now set at the belt. And the strike one pitch is instead of throw to first, and Matt kind of half falls back to the bag. Pirate bullpen has done very well. They have six victories, six of the ten wins, the bullpen. Duke, of course, would like to do it himself. And he's got Kemp, and the throw was not low enough. He had him, but the throw was up. If it was down towards the ground, Kemp is a dead duck. He started to go, but the throw was too high. Clement could come down, but much too late. So Matt got away with one there. Oh, and won the count to Casey Blake. Duke again ready. And goes over there. That was an easy read, which means that was a commercial move. Zach is trying to sell that move to first, but Matt Kemp knows better than that. Meanwhile, Blake waiting at the plate, 0 and 1. So Kemp takes his lead, increases it by one step. Duke looks at him now to the plate. And as a ground ball to third, up with it is Andy LaRoche. Fires across to Clement in time for the out, and that'll be that. But that for the Dodgers, three runs, four hits, the big blow. Andre Ephier goes down to get it and clears the right center field wall. And it's three to one, Dodgers.
Baseball on Prime Ticket is brought to you by CarMax. Now more than ever, the smart choice is CarMax. By Toyota. Get a great deal on Toyota's full line of hybrid and fuel-efficient vehicles at your Toyota dealer today. And by Corona. Fourth inning, 3-1 to one Dodgers. Andre Ethier with a double and a three-run home run tonight. In nine games at Dodger Stadium, is hitting 400. So he is really tearing it up. Jeff Clement slicing one down the left field line, going foul and back into the stands. So the pride of USC in Marshalltown, Iowa, coming back, struck out in the second inning. Clement was 0 for 2 last night. And he was 0 for 4 in the first game. So he's 0 for 7. He was a wonderful player at USC. Just getting his feet wet in the big leagues. Another foul ball. 0 and 2. Didn't get around on a fastball. Curveball has really hurt him so far in the series. And it's the old story. You're going to get it until you can prove you hit it. One and two. There was that change up from Monasterios. So Carlos having a big night. Got his first major league hit. Scored his first major league run. And he's leading 3-1 in the fourth inning in his first start. Ground ball bobbled by Loney. Underhands to Monasterios. And that'll do it. You can hear that back crack up here. I think Clement on that changeup was so far out in front of it, he cued the ball down to first. Look on TV replay that he really hit it hard, but he didn't. So one away. And now Lasting's Millage coming up. Jeff thinking about it was a lot easier playing for USC. Millage hit by a pitch in the second inning and then apparently did not remember how many outs there were with two out he was at second base and on a base hit to left field he wound up at third two and all the count Monasterios now the pitch count 58. Settled down considerably since that second inning. A drive down the left field line. That was a change up for sure. And Millage hits it foul upstairs. But he furnished all the power on that straight change and pulled it too much. Two balls, one strike. One and fastball that makes it three and one. Big bouncer to Casey Blake. And just like that, two down. So all of a sudden, Monasterios has retired six in a row. And the big play, first the confusion on the part of Lasting's Millard, and then with the bases loaded, getting Andy LaRoche to hit into a force play to end the inning. Now the pitcher, Zach Duke, who sacrificed in the second inning. Ball one. Three runs, five hits for the Dodgers, one swing of the bat by Andre Ethier with two men aboard. One run, three hits for the Pirates. Two and oh. Monasterios getting closer to 70 to 75 pitches. And they'll be watching him very closely now as he's over the 60 pitch mark. Honeycutt with his eyes on him as he goes three and oh to the pitcher. And breaking ball for ball four. 
the Monasterios has hit to and walked to. And Ronnie Cedeno coming up. Cedeno is one of those players who has never really been as good as they thought he would be. When he first came up with the Cubs, he was considered a top prospect. But he's been very, very inconsistent, and he's hitting only 208. It was a seven player deal last July that brought Cedeno from the Mariners to the Pirates. Fouled away, so he's in a hole immediately, 0 and 2. And of course, that seven player deal sent away one of the true fixtures in the Pirate lineup, their shortstop, Jack Wilson. Oh, and two. The big question for Cedeno, they're trying to figure out whether they really think he can be an everyday shortstop. They have another reclamation project with Bobby Crosby. So they've been alternating them at short. One and two to Cedeno. All the way. Cedeno has two home runs, six runs batted in. He's been in 22 games. Crosby's been in 14. One ball and two strikes. And another foul ball. The Pirates would love to have a winning season. I mean, somehow would they give anything if they could win one more game than they lose? But the odds are they will not do it. And that means Pittsburgh would have 18 consecutive losing seasons. 18. Two and two. There you go. The A's, the Red Sox way back, and the Pirates. Two and two. Fouled away. And we mentioned it, you know, there was a period of time where the Pirates were very good. Pirates are the only team in Major League history to have eight players appear in one All-Star game. But that was a long time ago. Ground ball to third. Casey Blake looks at second, goes to first. That's the inning. So for Carlos Monasterios, a nice easy inning despite the walk to Zach Duke. And at the end of three and a half, three to one, Dodgers.
the box is offering a variety of menu items and letting people choose any three for only $3 plus tax. And by your Southern California Ford dealer, where you'll find the new Transit Connect. Check it out at sc4dealers.com. Bottom of the fourth inning with the Dodgers leading the Pirates 3-1. Three to one. Three run home run by Andre Epier in the third inning. Now in the fourth, it will be DeWitt, Carroll, and Monasterios. And by the way, Joe Torrey was quoted before the game saying that Monasterios would go 70, 75 pitches. Well, he has made 73. And down in the Dodger bullpen, Ramon Ortiz is throwing. But Monasterio still in the dugout as DeWitt fouls it back. 0 oh and 1. And it looks like he's going to get a helmet and a bat. Naturally, the Dodgers want to win the game. They would also love to let him go five and pick up a victory. That's a strike. 0 oh and 2. Zach's been throwing strikes, but he's been hurt. Ephier had a double on an 0 and 1 pitch. Martin got a base hit on the first pitch. Ephier's home run was on an 0 and 2 pitch. Kemp had a base hit on an 0 and 1 pitch. And even Monasterio's little flare for a base hit to right field, the count was 0 and 1. So there are times when you can hurt by just throwing too many strikes. And that's what Zook obviously has had happen. Two and two the count to Blake DeWitt. Three and two. And the fastball is low, ball four. So Zach Duke walks his second man, and Jamie Carroll to ground it out coming up. Jamie 0 for 1, batting 222. Time. Blake DeWitt, maybe with something yep in his right eye. Well, Mariano Duncan concern comes over. He's still not quite ready. You would think we would have had a lot of that. Something in a player's eye the last two nights with the wind howling out here. Off speed for a strike. Big slow curve. 72 miles an hour. Three to one in favor of the Dodgers. Andre Ethier, a three run home run. Andrew McCutcheon, a home run. And Rick Honeycutt talking to Carlos Monasterios, who will be coming up. Proud possessor of his first major league hit. 0 oh and 1. 1 and 1. Zach Duke's curveballs 72 73 miles an hour. We'll see now if the Dodgers on a one and one count want to put a play on. Duke thinks it might be something in the works. One ball and one strike. Fastball punched into right field. Charging it is Ryan Church. Stopping at second is DeWitt. So Zach Duke in the bottom of the lineup hurts him. A walk to DeWitt. A single to right field by Carroll. 
do want nobody out, so you would expect Monasterios to try and get a bunt down. We'll see. Thing about Zach Dukes, he was fourth in the National League in ground outs compared to air outs. So he's looking for a double play, but the bunt is on and it's fouled at the plate and the count 0 and 1. Of course, talking about double plays, the Pirates have led the National League in turning double plays three straight years. But it also means because they've been losing so many games, they've had so many opportunities. Oh, and one the count. Monasterio shows bunt, pushes it foul. Oh, and two. Well, we we'll see now whether they let him try to bunt rather than swing away and hit into a double play. And misses and strikes out. So one away, runners at first and second. Third strikeout for Zach Duke, and it brings up Reed Johnson. Zach Duke, during the first half of last year, showed the form that made him somewhat of a rookie sensation in 2005. He was selected to his first All Star game that year. He was a little bit like Chad Billingsley. Pitched very well, made the All Star team, and then the second half, things deteriorated. And that's going to be hit off the end of the bat and a fair ball. Here comes Blake DeWitt to score, and they will hold Jamie Carroll at third on a blooper that hit the chalk in right field, and the Dodgers lead four to one. Right off the end of the bat and right down onto the chalk. So the Dodgers have picked up a run. They lead four to one. They have runners at second and third on that flare double by Johnson. And Russell Martin with first base open and Joe Kerrigan, the pitching coach, on his way out to the mound. They are just moving around down in the bullpen for the Pirates. Another background note about Zach Duke. He's never been quite the same since he had elbow problems back in 2007. He's never had surgery, but they say he has lost velocity off his fastball and his curveball, as we said, has been, oh, 72, 73. But each year he seems to see his chances get slimmer and slimmer of being a top pitcher. And now he's in a lot of trouble. Second and third, one out, down four to one. Martin one for two at the plate. Ball one. Duke has not really been hit that hard. Remember in the third inning, Monasterios a little flare to right. Then Martin got a little dribbler for a base hit. And then the home run by Ethier. He's still throwing first pitch strikes, 19 out of 20. That's the first time he has missed. Line drive, backhanded by LaRoche. He takes an extra base hit and two RBIs away from Russell Martin. So it goes. Boy, Martin crushed it. And a great play by Andy LaRoche. How in the world you can react that quickly from third base on a bullet. And Andy did, reaching, backhanding, no further play. So wouldn't you know the hardest hit ball in the inning is an out. And the batter now is the chief tormentor of Zach Duke, Andre Ethier, with a first inning double and a third inning three-run home run. It's four to one Dodgers. 
Second and third, two out. First base open. And that's a strike, 0 and 1. Going into the game, Ethier was hitting 316 against Zach Duke. He is now 8 for 21 against Duke. And a fly ball to left field. Lasting's Millage is there. And that'll be that. So Duke is able to fight his way, but he gives up one. And at the end of four, it's four to one, Doc. Dodgers lead four to one and certainly a Hyundai key to the game would be that play in the second inning where there was a base hit to left field and lasting Millard started to the plate started to go back Martin held up and then lost an opportunity to get him and the Dodgers still got out of the jam on a ground ball force at third base Monasterios thanks to heavens when he walked off the field and he went four innings and made 73 pitches picked up his first major league hit along the way scored his first major league run and now Ramon Ortiz has the ball and misses ball one so for Monasterios it was a good job but three out shy from picking up a win breaking ball to strike in the count one and one top of the order Iwamura LaRoche and McCutcheon on the corner. One and two. And a strike, and down he goes. Iwamura, by the way, came into the game as the best pirate in drawing pitches per plate appearance. He averages a shade more than four pitches and it was a four pitch at bat and he goes back empty handed one away. So Ortiz starts off with a strikeout and now Andy LaRoche. Strike. LaRoche didn't help offensively when he came up in the second inning with the bases loaded and hit into an inning ending force play. Dodgers have shut him down completely. He would have had a home run in game one, but the wind was blowing so hard left to right that it cut it down and Kemp caught the ball at the wall. Any other night, home run easy. He has sparkled defensively and he has kept the Pirates in the game by making that backhanded stab of the line drive by Martin with runners at second and third in the fourth inning. Two and two. And he came in here blazing hot, but he is 0 for 9, and his average at 322. Going up against his old club could be a 
case of trying too hard. Popped it up. Going out, do it. Carroll coming in, Kemp. Do it. Two down in the fifth inning, and LaRoche now 0 for 10 in the series. That's a big bat to shut down. Andrew McCutcheon homered in the first inning and fly to center in the third. Big swing. Oh, and one. Turned him around, almost hit him. Andrew hitting 303, four home runs, eight runs batted in. And look out over his head to the backstop. Wow. I mean, that was. Almost behind him, which of course is the worst possible place. So McCutcheon will take a little time. Most dangerous pitch. And then the next one on the outside corner. Two and two. Swing struck him out. Andrew mad at himself, man at Ortiz, and it's a one, two, three inning for Ramon at the end of four and a half, four to one, Dodgers. Dodgers lead four to one, and they have one of their youngest little fans enjoying herself and whatever she's munching on. <laughs> and here we go in the field. That's at Kemp's feet, ball one. And that's another one of those curveballs, 71. That's a fastball, but that's 85 best. 4 1 Dodgers. Matt Kemp has walked and singled. 3 0 oh the count. Pirates, as we mentioned, a string of consecutive losing years. This will be the 18th, it figures anyway. 3 0 oh fouled away. In September of last year, to give you an idea, 
how things really turn black for the Pirate fans, for management, and the team itself. In September last year, the Pirates lost 23 of their last 26 games. Towering top fly. Iwamura takes care of it. One away. Boy, that was a bad 3 0 swing by Matt Kelly. I mean, when they, when they green light you 3 0, you would expect to see the hitter, if anything, take a few rows out in foul ground or third. Matt. On a 3 0 pitch, I'm sure unhappy over the fact that not only didn't get much of it, but he fouled it off to the right. Right. We mentioned earlier how important the count is as to the success of the hitter. That's going to be down the left field line. Fair ball. Loney on his way for two, and he will make it easily. So James Loney, a one out double to left, and the batter will be Casey Blake. Big league hitters on a three ball no strike count. Their average batting average is 288. There are a lot of players. And if I remember, Eric Karras was one of them. Eric Karras hated to swing 3 and 0. He just never seemed to hit the ball hard. I'm pretty sure that's right. So Kemp was green lighted 3 and 0 and didn't do much at all. So here's Casey Blake. Slow curve ball for a strike. That's clocked at 71. Another off speed pitch. That's a tough thing. If you're Andrew McCutcheon out there in center field, Ramon Ortiz just buried you at home plate with a pitch over your head and slightly behind you. But they don't have a pitcher to retaliate on the mound now. I mean, Zach Duke is throwing curveballs at 71, fastballs in the low 80s, straight changes at 82. So it's not as if he's going to come back and try to retaliate or intimidate. He's just going about his business. One and two to count to Casey Blake. Fastball away. He went after it and fouled it where you'd expect him to hit a ball away. Still one and two. Four runs, eight hits for the Dodgers. One run, three hits for the Pirates. Andrew McCutcheon a home run. Andre Ethier, a three run home run. Breaking ball, hit to LaRoche. Two down, and the battle will be Blake DeWitt. Say, so stay warm on cool nights at the stadium with a This Is My Town fleece blanket, complimentary Blake Time DeWitt. Warner Cable. Tuesday, the first 50,000 fans in attendance receive their blanket. The Dodgers will begin their series against the Milwaukee Brewers. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com or call 866 Dodgers today. Here's DeWitt grounded to second and walk. Slow breaking ball. 72 mile an hour curveball. No balls, one strike. Fastball. And McCutcheon's at the other end of it, so that ought to be that. And it is. No runs, one hit a man left, and at the end of five, four to one, Dodgers.
1920. It was a most remarkable day. The Dodgers were in Boston playing the Boston Braves. It was Leon Cador and Joe Oscar, and it was a 1-1 tie, 26 innings. That's right, a tie. Game took three hours and 50 minutes. Let's go back to this one. That sounded strange, didn't it? A 26 inning game. Time a game, three hours and 50 minutes. What is really remarkable, even for the Dodgers, is what happened the first three days of May in 1920. Two and one the count to Ryan Church. So they had the 26 inning game. The next day, they played Philadelphia. That went 13 innings. The Dodgers lost that. And would you believe the next day they played Boston again? That was 19 innings, and they lost that. Ground ball, base hit. So Ryan Church, who always plays exceptionally well in this ballpark, two for three tonight. We have a trivia question for you to get you thinking. Ricky Henderson broke the Major League Baseball career record for steals on this date in 1991. Uh-huh. But whose record did he break? We'll give you the answer in a little while. Get back to that 1920, a series of three games. That's 58 innings. Three single games. Total of 58 innings. Foul ball. Ryan Domit with a 10 game hitting streak on the line has rounded out twice. A reminder tomorrow, yep. Jeff Karstens and Hiroki Kuroda. The final game of the year between the Dodgers and the Pirates. Dodgers lead tonight 4-1. to Still 0-2. On deck, Jeff Clement, the left-hand hitting first baseman. Down goes Ryan. So Dummett goes 0 for 3. Ortiz has struck out three of the five men he has faced. And the batter will be Jeff Clement. Clement struck out, grounded out, 0 for 2. Four runs, eight hits for the Dodgers. One run, four hits for the Pirates. That's a strike. A lot of pressure, I'm sure, on Clement in that seven man trade. Pirates give up their regular shortstop and Jack Wilson and now find themselves with Ronnie Cedeno and Bobby Crosby and neither man fulfilling the definition of a regular major league shortstop. So Clement has pressure on him to make the deal look better and he's hitting just 182. Breaking ball, breaking ball, breaking ball. That's all he gets. Sliders and curveballs. So Clement strikes out and that's four strikeouts for Ortiz. He's only faced six batters and he struck out four of them. There's the slider. Looks like a slow breaking ball on the videotape, but it darts like the head of a snake. Here's Lastings Millers. Right. Oh, and one. Bobby Crosby comes out on deck to bat for Zach Duke. And DJ Carrasco is down in the pen. Oh, 
0 and 2. Another slider. Ortiz comes in and really takes over. With four strikeouts tonight, he has 11 strikeouts, but eight walks, so he's been fighting it. High slider, one and two. Millage chasing it, so Ortiz winds up striking out the side. He has faced seven batters. He has struck out five of them, and the Dodgers lead four to one. Sixteen hitter against left-handers, and he's also kind of lucky. Look at this at the end of the bat. Little flare hits the chalk, and in the box score, it's an RBI double. Thank you very much. So the Dodgers lead four to one. For Zach Duke, as we've told you, he's been throwing first pitch strikes. It's been textbook as far as that is concerned. Twenty-three of twenty-five first pitch strikes. Make it 24 out of 26. However, he's allowed eight hits. Six of the eight hits, he was ahead in the count. The other two hits, the count was even. And he's ahead now, 0 and 2 to Jamie Carroll. Ramon Ortiz should be in the on deck circle, and he's not. Played umpire Doug Eddings. Obviously not aware of it as Rick Honeycutt talks to Ortiz. One and two. This will be Duke's last inning. Jack Tashner, the left-hander. G.J. Carrasco, the right-hander in the pen. Pop fly could be trouble, but going out to get it is Cedeno. Remember the trivia question? It had to do with Ricky Henderson breaking the major league career record for steals on this date in 1991. And the question was, whose record did he break? And the answer, the great Lou Brock. But what a difference. Lou wound up with 938, Ricky 1406. It's a strike to Ramon Ortiz. Way out in front of that curveball. You know, a couple of other notes about Ricky Henderson. The old story you can't steal first base. Well, not only did he get it first and steal bases, he scored 
twenty two hundred and ninety five runs and led off home runs eighty one times. Two down and here comes Reed Johnson. Dodgers have been fortunate in the third inning. Monasterios hit a little blooper into right field for a base hit. With one out, Martin hit a little roller. And Andrew LaRoche could not come up with it. Then Ethier hit the home run on an 0 2 pitch. And in the fourth inning, DeWitt walked, and Reed Johnson's flare to right field hit the chalk, and that scored DeWitt. So the Dodgers, fortunate with the bat, and have done very well in throttling the Pirates offensively. So Johnson, two for four, he continues his very good hitting against left hand pitching. As we said, he's always been very successful. And here's Martin. Now Russell has to console himself with the old baseball philosophy. It will all even out. And tonight in one way you could say an even out but in the other way you'd say absolutely not. Remember Rotten got, got that little roller in the third inning and Russell got a base hit. In the fourth inning he scorched one and Andy LaRoche took it away from him but it didn't even up because if LaRoche can't catch the line drive Martin had two RBIs. But Reed Johnson was going Martin fouls it off and they count one and two. Andre Ephier on deck. So Ethi awaits one and two the count to Russell Martin. So Martin goes down on that. That was probably the best breaking ball he's thrown in a while. He threw it about 77. No runs a hit and it's four to one dot. Then Andrew McCutcheon. Then he took care of Dolman. Then he wrapped up Clemens. And for good measure, he polished off Miller. So he struck out five. He has only faced seven batters. Bobby Crosby is going to bat now for Zach Duke. Right. So Zach Duke was unlucky. And then Andre Ethier really beat him with that three run home run. 
plus the facts you're not going to go very far with only one run and that's all the Bucks have. Crosby hitting 241 one home run four runs batted in line drive base hit. Also remember that base running jam in the second inning when lasting millage did not score from second on a base hit to left field. And then with the bases loaded Andrew LaRoche hit into a force play. So here is Cedeno hit by a pitch grounded to third 0 for 1 hitting just 205. Ground ball down to short they get one they will get two. So Ronnie Cedeno who's been trying to prove he's a regular shortstop but they don't have a regular shortstop. And with two down the batter will be Aki Iwamura. So Cedeno hits into the twin killing 6-4-3. Iwamura walked single struck out. And a strike. One ball and one strike. Zach Duke made 107 pitches and gave up the four runs, eight hits. Fouled away. Two and two the count. Down in the Dodger bullpen, George Sherrill and Ramon Troncoso. Troncoso is going to get the nickname 7 Eleven, open every day for sure. Three and two the count to Iwamura. Little number, that's a fair ball. See you later. A well, ball hit in front of the plate. No runs, one hit, nobody left. At the end of six and a half, Dodgers lead four to one. Crowd will now ask to sing God Bless America and then take me out to the ball game. And join the singing God Bless America. Please welcome back to the field, Malia Savetz.
The third inning produced a miracle for the Dodgers as they kind of broke the game open. First, there was a little pop fly into right field for a base hit. Then there was a little roller that LaRoche couldn't handle. And then Andre Epier broke on over the wall, and the Dodgers led 3-1. to one. The Hyundai key to the game for sure. A little luck, and then the home run. So Jack Cashner now picks up with the Dodgers leading, and the first pitch is behind him. And perhaps that is somewhat of a reminder of the pitch that went over the head of Andrew McCutcheon. We told you that uh, with Zach Duke out there throwing slow curve balls, they didn't have anybody to throw hard enough. And so Tashner reminds the Dodgers and Andre Evier two can play the game. All right, one ball and no strikes. And now Tashner hollers over to Larry Boa, I believe. Of course, Boa loves that. If he can get into the pitcher's head and into his skin, and some of the Bucks are pretty unhappy about it too. Ball two, two and zero. Oh. Here's the pitch to Andrew McCutcheon by Ortiz. I mean, you think they took a front of that? You bet they did. But they didn't have the guy to retaliate. The Tashna decided, all right, I'll do it. Fast ball hit into left field. So Ethier continues to make some remarkable plays, and he's not going to stop at first. Andre Ethier is just boiling the left-handers. Tonight, he has two doubles and a home run. And Ethier coming into the game was putting up huge numbers. He was hitting 333. So tonight he is three for four. Ten for twenty-four. Talking to the second base umpire, Kerwin Danley, I'm sure about the pitch behind his back. So now Matt Kemp. Dodgers four runs, ten hits. Pirates one run, five hits. Kashner almost threw that away. If you have some hot feelings between two teams, it's not bad to have it on the next to the last game of a four game series. With only one more game left for the year between the two. And that's a drive to center, but Andrew McCutcheon will flag it. So Kemp goes out to center, and James Loney will be coming up. One away. When the Pirates come up, in the eighth inning, they will have Andy LaRoche, who is 0 for 10 in the series, Andrew McCutcheon, and Ryan Church. So Andy's hungry. McCutcheon has a home run. He's one for three. And Ryan Church has a double and a single. Loney two fly balls to left and a double to left. And another base hit to left into the gap. By the time Millage cuts it off, Loney is into second base safely with a double. Ethier is home and the Dodgers lead five to one. John Russell up the steps. He's had enough. And Casey Blake will be coming up, and John will go to the pen. DJ Carrasco has been down there. Millich doing everything he can to cut it off, but Loney's in with a double. 
Tashner, who pitched well against the Dodgers, formerly with the Giants. But Jack comes in tonight, throws one behind Ethier. He and Boa shout at each other, which is exactly what Boa loved. Then Ethier doubles, and with one out, Loney doubles, and Jack is finished, and we'll be back. For the Pirates, number 77, DJ Carrasco. With the Dodgers leading 5-1, to one, Andre Ethier having a big night. Two doubles and a three-run home run. DJ Carrasco, a right-hander out of Safford, Arizona. Originally signed by the Orioles at a Pima Community College. And ball one. Carrasco originally drafted and signed by the Orioles, but both the Orioles and the Indians released him. And he signed with the independent team, the Johnstown Johnnies, as an outfielder. He wanted to play that badly. Pitch a strike. Pirates had seen him pitch in the minors, like what they saw. They purchased his contract from the Johnstown Johnnies for one dollar. That's right. One solitary buck. That's a strike. One thing right away you can tell. DJ Carrasco is an old fashioned type player. It looks like he jumped into his stockings in order to, you could play banjo on either side of his ankles. One and two. When Johnstone was picked up for a dollar by the Pirates, they said, we want you to pitch. He said, well, I want to hit. So they said, I'll tell you what, you'll pitch. And if you don't pitch well, we'll sell you back to the Johnstown Johnnies for a dollar. Among other things, he had pitched in Japan. So he's a determined fella, no doubt somewhat short on ability and certainly trying to make the most of it. DJ Carrasco. Two and two. Casey lined out to second, grounded out twice, 0 for 3, hitting 266. With Carrasco basically slider and a fastball, he is Loney at second with one out. Right hand batters hit 244 against Carrasco last year, and left handers the year before in 08 hit 186. Last year they hit 317 against him. 
but nevertheless in his career he's still above 500 20 and 16. Story of another fellow not blessed with great ability with a big heart and a determination to reach his goal. Then with the Royals, and he pitched over in Fukuoka four years ago. Battle with the White Sox for two, and here he is, DJ Carrasco. Ground ball wide a third to LaRose looks the runner back and takes care of Blake. So we have two down. And Blake DeWitt coming up. Second base number 33. Blake DeWitt. You know really you look at a player like Carrasco and you realize how hard he has battled to stay in the big leagues. And then you think of a kid like Clayton Kershaw absolutely blessed. Just blessed. Before you know it. He's pitching in the big leagues in his early 20s. It's amazing, isn't it? So easy for some. Five to one, Dodgers. Oh, and one. You also think of somebody on the Pirates like Garrett Jones, who did not play tonight, although he is in uniform, but he had food stuck in his esophagus and had to go to the hospital this morning to have it removed. Garrett spent almost eight years in the minor leagues. Oh, and two the count to Blake DeWitt. Speed pitch and down he goes. But the Dodgers get a couple of doubles, pick up a run, and at the end of seven, lead five to one. As we go to the eighth inning. You might remember the expression Lima time. Well, Jose Lima is here tonight taking in the ball game. He's back living in Los Angeles. And we understand that Jose's opened up a baseball school. He's going to be teaching kids seven years old and up the same techniques that made him a major leaguer. And if you are interested, you can visit LimaBaseball.com for more information. 13 years in the big leagues. Jose Lima time. It is Hong Chi Kuo time with the Dodgers leading 5 1. So it's been Monasterios for four. Then Ramon Artiz for two brilliant innings where he struck out five.
Here's Quo. Andy LaRoche desperate to get a base hit. 0 for 10 in the series. 0 for 3 tonight. On one. And a high fly ball, but very playable. Kemp is calling. So Andy goes 0 for 11. That's tough. You come back going up against your old ball club. You're from this neck of the woods. You, I'm sure, have a lot of friends here. And maybe trying too hard. Draw blanks. So one out in the eighth. Andrew McCutcheon homered in the first inning, fly to center in the third, struck out in the fifth, and had Ortiz almost take his head off his last at bat before striking out. Then Jack Kashner had one get away behind Andre Eath here, and hopefully that'll be the end of that. 0 and 1. Breaking ball. Little hard slider. Boy, I don't know how good Hong Chi Kuo could have been without four arm surgeries, two Tommy Johns. And you watch him throw so hard, you see him hit the slider at 88. And you think, wow. On the hands, fastball. Hung Chi Kuo is fully aware of the fact that the arm might just come completely apart every pitch he makes. Imagine the the mental weight that is on him. Slider at the belt buckle. One and two. Somehow he's been able to block that out. His philosophy is hey if it goes it goes. But I'm going to give it my best shot on every pitch. One and two. Two and two. Dodgers with Monasterios, Ortiz, and Quo. Two and two. Fouled off a good fastball at 91. Andrew McCutcheon hitting 300. Four home runs, eight runs batted in. In this series, he's had two home runs in the first inning. Had a double. Ball three. So after keeping the pitches on top of him, Hung Chi Kuo goes away. Three and two. Fastball. The hole is plugged up by Casey Blake. So two down here in the eighth inning. And Ryan Church coming up. You know, you can follow the Dodgers on your iPhone, iPod Touch, BlackBerry, and Android phone with MLB.com at bat 2010. Featuring play-by-play, -play, video highlights, and live audio broadcasts. Visit Dodgers.com for more details. Ryan Church, double, struck out, single, two for three tonight. Hitting well over 380 in his career at Dodger Stadium. Oh, and won the count. Little dribbler up along first. Quo can't get it, but Loney is there to tag Church going by. So a one two three inning for Hong Chi Kuo and we go to the bottom of the eighth five one Dodgers.
five to one Dodgers. Bottom of the eighth inning. Jamie Carroll. Then Hong Chi Kuo will give way to a pinch hitter and Reed Johnson in that order. Garrett Anderson comes out on deck. Jamie Carroll grounded to third, single to right, popped to short, one for three. Hung Chi Kuo came in, a little tune up, made 12 pitches, retired the side in order. 0 oh and 2 the count to Jamie Carroll, hitting 237. One more tomorrow with the Pirates. Jeff Karsten and Hiroki Kuroda. Monday is an off day, and Milwaukee will be in here Tuesday. Boy, that was a pitch to give you a jelly leg. Carrasco coming by way of third base. One and two. Carroll hanging in there. Look at that left leg. Stayed in place. Two and two. And then over to the top. Two and two. It's one thing to go sidearm almost submarine, another time to go over the top. But of course, what is really hard is to keep changing your arm level and release point and throw strikes. A hopper to the right side, even more, one away. Well, for the Dodgers, the big blow came in the third inning. It was a cold blast indeed. Andre Ethier hits it out with two men aboard against Zach Duke. And the Dodgers take a 3 to 1 lead. They now lead 5 1. Seven home runs for Andre. He was blistering left handers. And Garrett Anderson will now bat for Quo. You know, in talking about your arm and the release point, throwing sidearm, three quarters, over the top, etc., the best I ever saw, without a doubt, not just that he threw from every imaginable angle, but always for strikes. Juan Marichal. Unbelievable. Garrett Anderson struggling for his timing. Joe likes him a lot. Just waiting for him to catch up. And of course, they know he has always hit. But it's a difficult role just playing once in a while and briefly at that. 0 oh 2. Over the top. That was not a purpose pitch. But again, as we say, when you start throwing sidearm, it's hard to change that and still throw strikes. One and two. Garrett, who came up to the big leagues in 1994, so he has seen every possible type of pitch from every possible delivery. Down in the Dodger bullpen, the store is open. Ramon Troncoso getting ready to pitch the ninth inning. Talking about deliveries, you know the, the most unbelievable single pitch I ever saw as far as the delivery? Admittedly, it was an exhibition game, but it was still unbelievable. It was a major league exhibition game between the Yankees and the Dodgers in Miami Stadium. There was a left-hander with the Yankees by the name of Tommy Byrne. Pee Wee Reese was the hitter. I will never forget it. It is tattooed in my memory book. Check swing, strike three, two down. Tommy Byrne went into a windup and threw the ball behind his back to home plate. Yeah. He was left-handed. Why is it always a left-handed? But he wound up and threw the ball behind his back. It sailed in the air in a home plate. Reese jumped in the air and was furious. Typical big league player, and Pee Wee was a terrific guy. Why was he angry? 
He thought Byrne was trying to show him up. But it was unbelievable. Behind his back, and it was a ball, but it was close to a strike. Never forget it. Two out, eighth inning. We're talking deliveries. It's 5 1 Dodgers. Reed Johnson, who is a very good hitter, especially against left handers, two for four tonight, starting against Zach Duke. Out away. Paid attendance tonight. Lovely evening. 40,483. 40483. The largest crowd of the series last night, 46,775. Out of the way. Tommy Byrne. You know the other thing that the left-hander did? You wouldn't believe this. And he would do it with the bases loaded. He did it in the World Series. He did it at any time. He would be on the rubber, and he'd have the ball in his hand. He would throw the ball in the air. Catch it and continue with his windup. Now, how would you like to have him pitching with the bases loaded in the World Series and do that? He did it, I swear. A trio of bucks, and it's Ryan Church. So the Dodgers go one, two, three, and at the end of eight, lead the Pirates five to one. Five doubles and a home run. Epier has two, Johnson one, and Loney two. Five doubles and a home run for five runs. Good enough to stop the Pirates, who have just one, and that was the home run in the first inning. They also have just one double. So Ramon Troncoso, who's on a pace to break Mike Marshall's record, not that he will, and he's backed up by Jonathan Broxton. So the Dodgers trying to build slowly and have a winning streak after breaking a five game losing streak last night. And here's Ryan Doman talking about streaks. He has a 10 game hitting streak on the line. Ryan grounded out twice, struck out, switch hitter, now batting left handed as you see. That's in there. 92 fastball. One ball and one strike. Karsten and Corolla tomorrow. Hope you be out here with us. High fly ball, but playable. Kemp is there. So for Ryan Dummett, he goes 0 for 4, and it looks like his streak has ended at 10. One down, Jeff Clement coming up. 
Clement, 0 for 3 tonight, struck out twice and grounded out. Jeff hitting 179. One ball and no strikes. A Dodger victory tonight would give each team an identical record with the other. A Dodger win would make them 10 and 14. And for the Bucks, a loss would make them 10 and 14. So for Joe, his horse finished 16th, but his team is leading by four lengths tonight. All right. Meanwhile, Zach Duke, anything but happy. Zach came in two and two. He's now three and four lifetime should the Bucks lose against the Dodgers. One and two. Good breaking ball. Well, that's all he's going to see. All through the series, it's been very, very evident that young Jeff Clement has not been able to handle a breaking ball. And believe me, the scouts and every pitcher in the league will just give him a constant diet of curves and or sliders. So two out, ninth inning, 5-1 Dodgers. And here's Lasting's Millage. Right. Delwyn Young is out on deck as a pinch hitter. The bat for Carrasco if Millage can extend the inning. 0 and 1. And he strokes it into right center. That's in the gap. And it'll go to the wall. And Millage will stop at second with two out and down by four in the ninth inning. Second double for the Bucks tonight. So we've had seven doubles in the game. And now Delwyn Young. Delwyn, who lives in Palmdale, appeared as a pinch hitter last night and grounded out. He appeared as a pinch hitter in game one and struck out. Ball one. Ronnie Cedeno batting ninth in the lineup is on deck. Little ground ball. This ought to do it. And he does. So for the Bucks, no runs, one hit. They leave a man. They wind up with one run and six hits. And the run came on the third batter of the night. And that was Andrew McCutcheon who homered after Iwamura was picked off. And Ramon Ortiz officially will get the win. And for Ramon, his first victory since October the 1st of 2007 when he was with the Rockies. For Andre Ephier, another big night. Two doubles and a three-run home run. As the Dodgers beat Zach Duke, who's now two and three. One and one this year with the Dodgers, three and four lifetime. Well, a reminder tomorrow's the final game of the series at one. Hope you'll be out here. Hiroki Kuroda will try to get a shot at the Bucks, and we'll invite you now to stay tuned for Dodgers Live coming up next. Good night, everybody.